trying to fight the idea that math is just kind of the way it is or something, right? Like that question that sometimes you get, or that answer you sometimes get when you ask a question in the math class, which is, because that's the way it is, dummy. And we're not doing that. I refuse to say that to you, except for maybe on one occasion. Okay? So most of algebra 2 is pretty approachable, and there is a reason that it is that way. Cool. So there are only a couple things we have to kind of take on faith in here, and those are going to be kind of remarkable things. So the first stuff we're going to start with is, let's just get on the same page about why maybe we do numbers at all. Cool. All right. So, What's the beginning? Where did numbers come from to begin with? Yeah, kind of. Okay. What was I trying to do with, with my brain that I came up with numbers? That's good. Okay. You guys have seen this one. You guys have to be quiet because you've seen it. Oh, come on. We didn't know the answers. Okay, so when I see the number one, draw goats, because maybe goats would be a better analogy of the time period for that. But I can't draw goats, so we're going to draw sheep. Sheep look like goats. Looks like it's not So do sheep. <laughs> okay, so these are kind of the first numbers we would come up with, and these are just labels for quantities. So when I see one, I might think to myself, right, little thought bubble, a sheep. When I see two, what might I think to myself? Yeah, I might think to myself, two sheep, right? I'm going to quit up with a smiley face after this one. <laughs> okay, right? Two sheep, great. What's three represent? Yeah, three sheep, right? We all have this, like, Duh, you're an idiot kind of thing in our head, right? But really what I'm getting at is that these things represent quantities of objects, right? And we have a good kind of feel for what these numbers represent, right? My claim is that all the rest of the kind of complicated things that we do with numbers come out of this in some reason. So the set of numbers that I'm talking about Does the and so forth there stop? Okay. okay, so this set of numbers here, okay, these guys, what are those called? Do you have a name for them? That's one there. Yeah, natural is what we label them.
sort of the reason for this? Is it took a long time for our literacy to reach a level where we needed to just go to class and read This is still relevant today <laughs> in one of our classmates' lives. All right. Uh, what comes after whole numbers? Yeah, what do you develop negative numbers to keep track of? Why would you do that? Where does it come from? Yeah, if we want to keep track of debt or something, we might incorporate negative numbers. So what do we call the natural numbers with So the integers, let's see, those are stuff and then negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Symbol for those? Anybody know? This one I'm not going to worry about whether you have in your memory. I didn't even write down. So I want you to know this one, and that those are the natural numbers, right? I want you to know that the integers are these ones. I, I'm not so worried about the symbols. I would like you to know that the whole numbers are the naturals and zero, but I'm not worried about the symbol on that one at all. Cool? All right, so this brings us kind of through accounting, right? These are the kind of the labels I would use for quantity. When I see three, I think of three sheep. When I see zero, I think of zero sheep. When I see negative three, I think of, yeah, I think of owing someone three sheep or anti-sheep, right? Anti-sheep being the thing you combine with a sheep to have nothing. Yeah. Okay, so these right now are just labels. Now, what can I do with labels? What do you do with numbers? Yeah, we have lots of symbols for manipulating these, right? Maybe the first two are something like this. There's this symbol and this symbol. Right? What do you mean by those? So when you see this, what do you think? Okay, so how about this? Let's incorporate this symbol in a sentence and then maybe you can figure it out. Okay. You all are feeling like I'm kind of a dumbass right now. <laughs> okay, so let's think about two. What do we think when we see two? Yeah, we might think about sheep or whatever other quantity we can Okay, so we think about two sheep, right? When we see the three, what do we think about? The more sheep, right? And what do we think when we see this symbol? What does add them together mean? Make the sheep You see that? Yeah, really this means combine these things, right? So you have two sheep and you have three sheep, and you're supposed to stick those together into one group. How many sheep are in that group? Five sheep, right? You see that? That's really all we need by this simple clause. Is we need put these quantities together. Right? You see that? So. 
So, what do I mean by this symbol in the middle here? What does this thing mean? What do I mean when I write equals? This is an easy word. It's two letters. Is. You guys see that? What I mean by saying this, right, is that the, if I have So the thing I'm trying to drive home with the equal sign bit, when you write an equal sign, what you mean is the stuff on the left and the stuff on the right are exactly the same. All right, so this is one of my operations, addition. What other operations can I do with them? Yeah, I can subtract. I should get those operations kind of together. Okay, so let's talk about operations for a moment, and then we'll talk about kind of natural functions. <coughs> okay, so we'd like to say that the operations Yeah, really addition and subtraction are really the same operation. Multiplication and division are also the same operation. Right? They occur at the same level in that order of operations business, right? Really, they're just the undoing operations for one another, right? So the thing that I want to get rid of or the thing that I want to highlight is here I want you to think that <coughs> subtraction the same thing as addition of the opposite, right? And division is multiplication by, what was your main keyword? It turns out actually up here it's fairly fun. So really I would like it to kind of be in your head at least a little bit that addition and subtraction are really kind of the same level of operation. They're almost the same. Multiplication and division are really pretty much the same thing. Or at least I can rephrase it. So let's maybe write a couple stories. Stories are good because they really anchor this stuff, right? Otherwise, I'm just talking about what's 2 plus 3 times 8, and why the hell would I do that, right? There is a story behind all the math problems in your book. You can write them all the time. We'll take them. Right? But let's think about, okay, I want to write a story about 2 plus negative Don't tell me what this equals. I don't care. Okay? But think about a story that goes with it. If you want an easier story to write, write this story for 2 minus 1. That's a, an equivalent number, right? But a difference.
that story again. <laughs> you have two fish, someone gives you an anti-fish. That's fine, actually. That's a reasonable story. It has less to do with reality than I would like, but whatever. <laughs> then you can have two smiley faces and a brownie <laughs> face. They don't cancel. <laughs> say someone has two dollars and also already owes someone else a dollar, right? So I have two dollars, but I borrowed a dollar off Bailey yesterday. How much money do I have to spend on lunch today? Right. Really a dollar if I'm going to pay you. Yeah, really I'm thinking about counting this debt in my stuff for today. Okay. We'll see that. The anti-fish thing is we could do this with protons, actually, because anti-protons make sense, right? So, at the LHC, is the LHC, Large Halodron Collider, it's like in Switzerland, big part of Switzerland. There are two protons. a little bit weird, right? Because actually what you're going to end up with is one proton in a very small explosion. <laughs> if you do this with larger quantities of things, you end up with a, like kilograms. If you have two kilograms of protons and a kilogram of antiprotons, you have left over a kilogram of protons and an explosion that will take off the face of the planet. Right? So I advise against Also hard to hold. <laughs> Stable amp temperatures can be a bitch. So. Anyway, particle physics aside, right? You have two of something and a debt of one. You combine it. Right? You're left with one. That amounts to the same thing, right? The story is a little different. Yes, it is. Alright, how about multiplication? Can we write some stories for multiplication? So if I want to multiply 2 by 3, so what we think when we multiply, right, what's a reason that I would multiply in terms of, like, I don't know, five stocks, or pancakes, some of you were there when I was cooking pancakes this morning. Yeah, I can. So, if I'm trying to phrase a 2 times 3 in terms of pancakes, how could I do that? Awesome. You guys see that? When I'm multiplying, what I'm trying to represent, right, the idea I'm wrapping here, is there are this many groups of this many things. 
some kind of two groups of three things story, right? See that? So there are two plates. the story that goes with three times two? Is that the same story? These are actually slightly different stories, right? They represent the same amount of total pancakes, but they're actually a slightly different story. Okay. So that three times two, I want you to think three plates, two pancakes, Sometimes when you try to split things, you can't give everybody a whole thing, right? Can you come up with a story for that happens? <laughs> Say that again? Yeah. What a great example. <laughs> Thank you for supplying this example story. So, story. There are 31 of us. If we split stories coffee, <laughs> which is maybe not actually nice. If story had to share, Yeah, or how much would each of us get? Maybe it's a better phrase. I see that. So what's the number I'm repping here with this story? About story and this coffee and stuff to share. Yeah, I'm repping the story here, right? Kind of thing in here. All this stuff is really about the number one divided by 31. Right? That's really what we mean when division. You need to take the top, right, you have that many things, and you need to split it amongst this other many things, right? So in this case, we've got one cup of coffee per 31 people, right? Really, we all get a cold, I think, unless everyone's got a second cup. Cool. So this brings us to our next set of numbers which occur kind of naturally, right? Really, because we want to split things, right? So far we had this kind of, okay, we can combine things, we can add, subtract, right? We could actually have added with just the natural numbers. When we started subtracting, we needed the whole numbers or the integers. We could multiply with either, that was fine. But dividing gets us to a new place. 
What's the new place that division gives us? The fractions, right? Okay, there's a better word for fraction. AKA. No. This thing's a ratio. another problem here. And the other problem is where this kind of big funky R comes in. So, so far I've kind of covered some operations and out of those operations I got fractions, right? Okay, now the next another maybe more intuitive way to get there. And that's the way that you guys all think about fractions. How do you guys like to think about fractions right now? You don't, right? Show of hands for don't like to think about fractions. Okay, we're going to overcome that, I promise. You will at the end of the semester be like, damn it, that one's a decimal. I can't do So, fractions are a bit scary, right? And right now you guys are kind of used to converting them to decimals to deal, right? Okay. Maybe a little. Okay, so let's think about decimals. Okay, so when we write down This is a this is a thing that's a bit deeper than the class. So right now I'm just going to ask you to trust me. If you want to see the why on this, I'm glad to try to show it to you. We'll take. I just don't want to show it. There is a good reason that this happens. It's not impossible to understand. It's just me. So for right now, this repeating thing just kind of happens, right? Sometimes that.
other thing that I want you to know about decimals is that if you start writing down random things as decimals, like say, and this is really where our real numbers come in. If I write down some just random stuff, like 0.1, 1.2, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, kind of continue this kind of oddball pattern. Okay. Is that going to repeat? Right? There's no block that's going to repeat. So this thing wasn't one of these guys. It's not a fraction, it's not a rational number, it's something new. This something new that it is, is one of these real numbers. And really what we mean by real numbers is this set of all this. With one little copy of Because once the thing is positive. Caveat being, this guy So this thing here, really what I'm going to think is that this is 9 tenths and 9 hundredths, 9, 9 tenths, 9 hundredths, 9 thousandths, and kind of so on, right? Okay, so if I cut this thing into pieces, I'm going to cut it into 10 pieces. There's nine of them, there's one of them. So this thing here, right, that's nine tenths. Now how do I get a hundred out of the out of this tenth space? Maybe let me phrase that to answer. There's a tenth case, right? If I cut it into ten pieces, how big are each of the ten? There are a hundred, right? So here's one of them. There's the other nine. So these guys here are nine hundredths. If I cut this guy, this is a hundredth right now. If I cut it into ten pieces, what's that <coughs> stuff? Nine of the thousand pieces, right? You guys all see that? You guys see I'm making this number manually by kind of shading pieces. So here's nine tenths, there's nine hundredths, there's nine thousandths. How much stuff am I going to be left with if I keep doing this process forever? You guys see that's what the dots mean. The dots mean keep doing this forever. If 
If I keep doing this forever, how much of the square is going to be unshaded? None of it. I'm going to shade all of it in. See that? So that means that the thing that I was shading, right, that's this number, is actually the size of the box. That box is a one square box. So this number and this number are the same. So this is the one caveat about decimal expansions. When you stop in 0.9s repeating, you may as well kick the previous up by one and stop in zeros. You see what happened there. This is, there were a lot of nines. I could go to this place, turn it up one notch, and then put zeros in. Cool that? That's really the only caveat about decimal expansions. Otherwise, the real numbers are all the decimal expansions. Giving them though. It's the only currency we have that represents it. Right, but the dollar Yeah, you're giving them the dollar bill. scared of decimals when you're done with it, which is the Cool. Alright, this is what I want you to know about real numbers. What was the other one? What was the one that came before real numbers? Rational numbers? What was the one before that? Integers? What was the one before that? Whole numbers? And the one before that? Natural numbers. So, what I want you to know is those labels, what they are, and that they all came from somewhere you shouldn't be So, when I say all real numbers, oh, what's the symbol for that? Yeah, it's this thing. Cool. Alright, so we're going to use the fancy R a lot. What do we mean by the fancy R? Yeah, it's nothing scary. It's all the real numbers, which are, wait, that's not scary. What are all the real numbers? Just, just all the decimal things. Right? Nothing more or less. They're just the decimal. And there's this weird thing about it, but if I forget that, it's really okay. If I just think about them as decimal, it's no big deal. Cool. Alright. So, I need one more thing from you before we call it a day. And that's, I need to remember something about order of operations. And maybe we'll write a couple of more complicated stories. So, how many of you have heard this? Pemdas thing my dad did. Yeah. Most of you? All of you? Okay. I'm tossing that shit out the window. No more Pemdas. Pitch it. Think up some clever acronym to go with this. The best one gets an extra credit. I don't have one yet. I just, I decided to. It's 
actually there. It's present. I don't have to infer like, anything. Right? Cool. So G, grouping. So parentheses are a grouping symbol, long fraction bars are a grouping symbol, what else is a grouping symbol? Okay, brackets, what else? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's actually a reason. I gotta do the inside of it first. See that? <laughs> yeah, absolute value bars are a grouping symbol too. You can see that? So there's a bunch of grouping symbols. Right? Maybe you guys don't know what absolute value bars are. That's not required material. easier if you did, but it's still in chapter 8, so don't worry. So, what's the other grouping symbol that maybe you guys haven't seen? Some of you probably haven't seen much function notation, right? The people who have taken a class from me have seen lots of function notation. Other people maybe less so. So these? Right? There are actually parentheses here, but what these mean parentheses meant, not group these and then multiply by f, but group these and then do f to it, right? We're going to talk a lot about functions next class period, so if that's over your head, don't sweat it, okay? So grouping symbols comes first, what's e stand for? First. Yeah, exponent. What's amp stand for? When do you do division? <laughs> yeah, in the same place, right? So, and division comes here. What's that A stand for? And answer. Cool. So this should be your new order of operations graph. Mostly the change, right, is that I'm getting rid of Can we write stories about maybe this top thing? The others are maybe a bit much. Yeah, 
this is important, right? They have to split them even. If four people find them and one of them gobbles them, there's no two plus three over four present, right? Other than maybe how many should everybody have got? So if four people find them, if they share evenly, how many does each person get? Yeah, the answer is. Skittles is hard. Have you ever tried? <laughs> sure, yeah. So, after. <coughs> yeah, that's great. You guys see that? Okay, so maybe remaking this problem with something more splittable. You know? <laughs> All right. So, this is one with division. We've done the addition piece first, right? And then we've divided, right? So we followed our order of operations nicely. Let's do that. Okay. Let's write a story about two plus four, oh, four times two plus three plus one. Go. trying to write an equivalent story, right, or a story about the same number of things, we could distribute the four, right? or we could add the two and the three together and then multiply by four, and then add one, right? We could just say there were 21 things, right? That's a different story, though, right? What's the story that goes with this expression? So what we need to write a story about is four groups of two plus three things, right? Okay, so how about this? So that's a reasonable question, right? So to be able to add these, I have to convince you that they're like terms, right? That's going to come in my sentence at the end. How much whatever was there, right? If I, that how many food items were there, then they're like terms. If it's how many pancakes are there, then including the three sauces. Right? So it's all in the question here. 
That gets it separate from the plate. <coughs> My concern is that I might be writing a sentence that have the can a slice of cantaloupe on each plate, right? And then I would be writing a sentence about four times two plus three plus one. Right? Instead of writing a story about four times two plus three plus one. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my there's a slice of cantaloupe under it. How do I ask a question that gets me to combine all those? This is kind of a crappy sentence, right? <laughs> this is really kind of a crummily constructed story. I wish I could do better. <laughs> but this story does have the answer, 4 times the quantity 2 plus 3 plus 1. And if I was to evaluate this thing, what would I do first? So I do the 2 plus 3, I get 5, right? Then I multiply it because multiplication comes four addition, right? So, add one. so I get 21 out of this. Cool. Alright. This is what I have for today. There is homework up on Blackboard for chapters 1 and 6. Okay. This is roughly the stuff out of chapter 1. I'm just, chapter 1 is just do you have some number sense? You might want to remember how order of operations works. It would be a good idea if you practice a little bit with the story. Right, so spend a minute, think about a story for each of the problems that they ask you in chapter one. In chapter six, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm not gonna talk about specifically. It's about a bunch of factoring kind of thing. If you're not sure if you remember how to factor, go check it out. There are lectures for how to factor on YouTube, but I'm not gonna talk about it in class otherwise. If you don't remember how to factor, feel free to bring in some questions.